do they look out there this morning? Uh, you know, I mean, I looked at most of the film. There, there's, there was some positive stuff. I thought we ran the ball pretty good. Though guys, when they had a chance to make a play, made it. So that's positive. Uh, we had some explosive plays, which we have to do better at that than we did last year. So that's guys catching a ball and running with it, handing off, running with it, seeing guys open down the field, converting those. So yeah, that was some positive. We we probably gotta we gotta we gotta do a better job on the offensive line from a communication standpoint. Uh, get get the right guys on the right guy. Get the guys on the right guy. So from that standpoint, I think. Uh, you know, there's some steps to be taken, but it was, I thought it was pretty decent. It wasn't bad. Coach, how is the um, uh, progress toward um, protecting quarterback? You know, gave up a lot of sacks the last couple of years. Yeah. I know it's a combination of factors. Um, talk about that, what needs to happen for that number to go go down. Well, you know, it's, it's it, the sack is in the passing game, everybody's involved. Receivers got to get open. Yeah. Offensive line have to block. Running backs have to protect. Quarterbacks have to make quick decisions, get the ball out of their hands. So, all those things have to come in play. And uh, for us to get explosive plays, sometimes we have to match protect, get some matchups on the backside, and that takes a little bit longer. So, uh, I think we've we've taken steps in that direction to do a better job protecting the quarterback. There were some times last year. Uh, I don't remember the total that we had, but I know there were there was an inordinate amount of times that the quarterback has to make a better decision and make it quicker. So it doesn't necessarily fall on the offensive line. You know, I think some, that's a misnomer that yeah. you know it gave up a lot of sacks. Your O line must not be good, and that's not the case. Guys aren't open, so the quarterback's got to hold it. Yeah. Maybe a guy busted an assignment, ran the wrong route, so he's looking in a certain area. The guy's not there, so. And it's just a, uh, it's a combination of a lot of, of seconds sometimes. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, you're supposed to run a flat route and you run a seam route. Well, the quarterback's eyes are over here because the rotation took him there. And where the hell is the guy? You know, and he's not there. So uh, there's a lot of things that go into a sack. And it's not necessarily the old line. You know, it's, and, and it's the receivers, it's the running backs, it's the quarterbacks. So there's a lot of things. So when you, anytime you implement a new system and, uh, and you do those things, all those things have to come together. And I think we've done a better job this spring, uh, in the spring and in this camp. I, I've been really pleased at the progress some of those guys have made. So we should, we should, I don't know if the number will go down. I don't know if you want it to. I don't know if that's going to lend itself to that. But I think we'll have fewer breakdowns. We'll get free runners, free hits at the quarterback. You know, That's what you don't want. You don't want those free guys coming yeah. through. Or get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you. You look around college football. There's there's so many quarterbacks that get dinged. Yeah. You know they're out. They're out. There another guy's out. Another guy's out. And it's, I guess, certain systems allow themselves to say we're just going to throw it quicker and not worry about protection so much. Yeah. Uh, we're not like that. We'd rather protect, and then uh, you know throw single receiver routes if we need to. What have you seen out of your receivers so far in camp? You know it's been competitive this camp. Mm -hmm. It's been good. There's been. Uh, uh, Josh has had a good camp so far. He's still got to make more plays. Uh, you, Brady's had a good camp. Marquez is dinged for a couple of days. Now he's back out there. At the Z position, you got carried. Dan and Cavill, I think, is really – Dan and is taking a step forward, which is, we're excited about. You know, that's a big body, man. You can't uh, – it's hard to pass that up. So him taking a step forward, he's going to – he's 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 put himself in position to play, you know, and uh, – uh, it, you know, you push, you you push carry, carry with another senior. That you, you create competition and say you want to play. Let's go. You know, yeah. and, and it's not your job. Where everybody's going to compete and everybody's going to have an opportunity to to show what they got. Greg Campbell had a great day today. I mean, a great not not a good a great day today. He made some spectacular catches, catching runs, touchdown things like that. He just had really had a good day, and it's and he's a guy that's kind of been didn't play much last year on the back burner. And then spring was okay. Camp been coming along, really shining the day, so he'll have a chance to move up and get more reps, you know? That's what camp's all about, is just creating some competition so that guys know nobody's safe. Nobody's ever safe. You gotta always play. How's the running back situation? You still searching for a compliment to- uh, Jalen? Jalen. I think uh, Terrell Clay has 
really step forward from that standpoint. I think he's he's uh, he's so good in. The, in you, we were just talking about protections. He's so good from an identification step. He's making calls and helping the offensive line and <laughs> he sees things. Uh, he, he he's going to be a really good third down back. He's got good hands. He's uh, uh, he ran the ball well today. He had a couple of really nice runs. But I think him his where he's come from learning about football just from a protection standpoint, identifying fronts and coverages, seeing rotations where pressure packages are, are taking place, and uh, he's really done a good job. So we're really pleased with him. And then Brett Winnigan had a good day today. He, but he's been doing well. He's had, you know, he was one, you go, well, let's see, maybe a freshman's going to do it. Maybe B.J. Daniels going to come in and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But Brett had a good day today. So we're, kind of, we're really pleased with that. Now we've got, you feel like you've got some depth that you can say, all right, we can get these guys in on third down, you know, from a protection standpoint and then catching the football. Because you got to be able to do both. If all you do is catch and you can't protect, well, you get five man protection every time. So there's certain routes you're just not going to be able to throw. But if you're able to go to six man, chip, identify things, and then get out and then catch the ball and do something with it, so you got an advantage there. BJ yeah. and Gidry looking. looking yeah, good. they're freshmen. Yeah. I mean, they're freshmen, so their heads are swimming. Yeah. Uh, protection's the last <laughs> thing for them to come. Yeah. So we gave them the ball today, so they did a good job with that. But then you say, okay, protect, who do you have? Ugh, yeah, not yeah. so much, you know. So now it falls on the quarterbacks to say, you got him. And then you have, yeah, if he comes, you got him, you know. So it's. You got to tell them that in the huddle. Uh, yeah, no, they can't. No. They got to tell them when they get to the line of scrimmage and they look at it. You oh, can yeah. tell when they have yeah. no idea because they'll look over there and go, oh, shit. <laughs> And I tell the quarterbacks, look, when he gives you the old shit look, tell him him because that guy's going to hit you if you don't tell him him. You know that guy. So can that's why it's so important for the quarterbacks to know the protection. What's the old shit look look like? Can you replicate it? <laughs> I don't No, I don't want to do it. I'm too old. <laughs> My wife told me she was pregnant for the first time. Went, oh, no. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Frank, uh, so, Coach Wilson says uh, Halen uh, Stewart seems to be back in the flow. Yeah, you know, we thought last year we thought the guy's a good player, and then, you know, fortunately it happens in the first game. So he's been rehabbing, rehabbing, been excited about getting him back, and he, and he came back. didn't go through spring. So he said, what's going to be like this summer? He went through workouts and everything else, event-free, and then now he's having a good camp. He's a good player. He really is. He's a, he's a, he's a bona fide fullback. He's a good player. Frank said y'all uh, threw the ball to him a couple times. We did, we, and he catches the ball well. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's not a—he doesn't talk a lot. He's soft-spoken. He doesn't say a lot, but he—he he, he speaks loudly with his play. So, he's—I uh, like the guy. He's smart. He understands stuff. We're putting him in some protection packages and things like that, which speaks volumes for him. But, you know, we got two more years. We got this year and another year with him. So he's. Uh, it's kind of fun to watch watch him grow. Can, can he be as effective as uh, as Andrew was? I mean, when Andrew got in there for you last year, he was he was pretty good. He's good. He's more athletic than Andrew is. He'll be more physical than Andrew will be. Uh, he's a, he's a true fullback in the sense that he's when he locks on, he he he's got a chance to make a dent in the defense. So he's it, we should we should upgrade there. Uh, and I love Andrew to death, but Halen's going to upgrade us from that standpoint. Right. right. Yeah. What about the yeah. offensive line? What have you liked out of them? So far? You know, it's a bunch of old guys. You know, it's yeah. seniors. Shit, they got to be playing better. So they're communicating better. Uh, when I was speaking about the miscommunication early, that was a lot with the twos, and those are younger mm -hmm. guys. But the older guys, I thought, did a pretty good job today from a communication standpoint. That's the whole thing. If we get hats on hats, we're fine. It's when you get free guys running in the in the seams and gaps that, you know, you get negative yardage plays, sacks, things like that. Well, that's not what you want. So those guys do a good job helping. They've played together now a whole year, two springs, summer. They did a great job this summer. Got them in camp. So the, the communication process is going well with them. And when that happens, you got a chance, you know. Any idea who your number two quarterback no. is at this point? You know, just no. Nah, keep competing, you know. No. Do I have an idea? Yeah. I'm not telling. But you just, they just got to compete. It's it's. I think it's every position every day. You know, you watch a preseason game now and the guys in the fourth quarter, you say, those guys aren't going to be on the team. And you're probably right. But you're not 100% right because there's somebody in the fourth quarter that's going to play because they watch and play and you go, shit, fourth quarter, he's going to get cut and look at him go. Some other team's looking at that film too and going, I'm going to pick that guy up, look at him play. 
or your own organization goes, we're, t- we're going to keep this guy for a little bit longer. Well, you share that with the players and you say, you know what, it's every year. You get one rep, make it look like that. You get 10, make them all look like that. So you create competition and you continue to push guys. So if a guy has a bad day, that's okay. We got somebody else. You're not comf- don't get comfortable. I think the best part of, of guys being able to grow is when they reach a certain level and then they're uncomfortable again. You force them to be uncomfortable. Now they get to experience some more growth. <clears throat> Once they get to a comfort level, they don't grow anymore. They can that they've already hit that's the ceiling. That's where they're going to go. You make them uncomfortable. Now they got a chance to grow some more. They got to. They, but if, if if they're allowed to just sit back and say, okay, well, I know I'm the starter. I don't let Dalton get comfortable. He'll tell you. I mean, I, I don't say, ah, that's okay. You'll be all right. I'm not doing that. He's he's got to. He, we got to push him. He's got to. I don't want Dalton to be the best quarterback at UTSA or in the conference or in the country. I just want him to be the best he can be. Well, we got to find out where that is. Where is that? So you keep pushing those guys. You shove them, man. You got to stick your foot up their ass, whatever you got to do, but you got to keep shoving them forward because nobody knows how far you can take yourself. And sometimes you need help. Well, the majority of the time you need help. So That's kind of hard with a guy like Dalton because, I mean, from where he came, you know, Coach came here, he didn't have any guarantees. He didn't even be on the team at the end of his first year. Right. And so he's always out there trying to push himself, trying to, you know, he thinks he – he needs to show out like that. that. Was it a process trying to get him in that? No, mode? I think it was easier with him because he knows he was behind the eight ball. Yeah. So he was eager to say, give it to me. Give me whatever you got. I want to give it. Just give it. I don't care. Give it to me. Yell, scream, cuss, whatever you want. Give me whatever you got. I'll take it. I want to get better. Because he, he wanted, you know, I, I think it's a, a deal of him coming out of high school, whether he felt slighted or not, I don't know. But he wanted to come here and play ball. He came here, he's playing football, and he earns a scholarship. Now he's a starter, and now he's, you know, he's getting some accolades. It, that's not, he doesn't care about all that stuff. I just want to get better. So once you get into that framework of, of me getting better and me improving, you have an opportunity to grow. If he says, I got the scholarship, I'm the starter, I'm good. The, that's where the guy's going to level out. He can't get any better. Well, how can you get better? How can you push yourself even right. further than what it is? It doesn't seem like he's been doing that. Though. No, he's not doing that. He's not, but I'm not going to let him do that. Yeah. He's not doing that, but I'm not letting him do that. And then even when he gets to a point where he thinks I'm doing the best I can, that's when I, you got to shove him and say, we got another step to take. Let's just take another step. Let's see if we can go further. How's that. he been looking? He's really had a good camp. He's done a good job. I, he, where he's really improved that, he's more confident, so there he's therefore he's taking on a more of a leadership role. And because he's taking on more of a leadership role, the other guys feel him. They they, they, they feel who he is. So that's kind of uh, it's kind of cool to watch guys grow to a point where you say now he's confident in himself. Now let me get confidence in others. Let me get others to come along with me, you know. He's got enough weapons, he's not gonna have to average five hundred yards a game. We're, we're not. Yeah, we're, that's not that's not how we're built or anything like yeah. that. Anyway, we're not going to do that. But uh, he's not going to have to do that. He might throw for five hundred, but it's because he hit guys and they turned to you know a hitch route in the forty or fifty, you know something like that. So he's uh, he's he's able to put the ball where it needs. He's starting to understand situational football, or third down conversions, red zone stuff, uh, taking shots down the field when they're appropriate. When maybe we ought to just take the check down and move on. So he's hit more check downs in the last week than uh, maybe all last season. But he understands. I don't need to hold on to the football. I can just throw it and move on. We pick up five. That's good. It's first and ten. Now it's second and five. That's a good play. Was that what was happening uh, last year, Coach? Because it, if you look at his stats all last year, he was uh, he was great out of the shoot. He was uh, he was hitting at a high percentage for for his first eight ten passes. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then his percentage would go down. What was happening with that? Well, you know, teams adjust. So he, he, you prepare game plan wise, and then teams adjust. So you have to adjust in the course of a game. Well, sometimes the adjustment is not so much to throw a dig or a shallow, it's to throw a check down or an out. And he was, he was missing some of those. But that's when if it's his first year offensively in the offense. So he wasn't aware of, of, I got this and this. Well, that's happening over there. I know I can go right here right now. That wasn't happening. That just didn't click in his brain. You see guys going to college in the NFL right now, and you say, well, how come the guy hadn't, he can't make it? What's going on with that? He's never, he's never processed information. He's never called a play in the huddle. 
got to the line of scrimmage, read a defense that they just catch and throw or do whatever they do. Uh, so those guys can't process that information. So now they're getting hit. They're holding on to the football because they're looking at one spot. And then this is happening when there's a guy open on the other side. Well, that's kind of the same steps that he had gone through, understanding what he was looking at. And then when it changed, the landscape changed, I got to go somewhere else. And that's what he wasn't able to do. He was, he, he, or he wasn't able to do with, with the frequency and, and the quickness of, of right. him being able to do it. Right. Now we get a sack. Now we get hold on. Now we get a scramble, things like that. So, so is he so is he better? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right yes, he's better. He's better. You'll see a better player back there this year. You'll see a more comfortable guy. Uh, you'll see a guy that uh, uh, understands our offense better. So therefore, he's able to operate within the offense better. Experience. It's a, I mean, come on, you yeah, can't, you can't, know, can't do you guys probably sucked when y'all first started. Now look at you, <laughs> right? Hey, my head's still swimming. We're talking about <laughs> rookies whose head are swimming. I've been out here eight years, my head's still swimming. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, when you start talking about that stuff, yeah, the experience of, of actually doing it, yeah, you can't. Can't do it. Yeah, you can't. There's no, can't duplicate that. No, you can't. So the guys that get a chance to play. And then a the maturity of a person, too, you know. I mean, there's a guy who really didn't play and then, but now he's maturing, he's becoming a man, and, and you know, things are starting to make more sense to him in life. His life is starting to make more sense to him. Priorities, everything. So you start getting things in place.